In this video, I'm going to walk you through Alex's problem designing a galvanic cell from a single displacement redox reaction. So for this problem, we're given a redox reaction and then also a diagram of a galvanic cell, and then we're asked to answer some questions about the composition of the cell. The first thing that we have to figure out is writing a balanced equation for the half reaction that takes place at the cathode and also a reaction that takes place at the anode. Um, so I'm going to give you a couple of tricks that we use to help us identify which is which. First, we have oil rig, which um, tells us that oxidation involves the loss of electrons and reduction involves the gain of electrons. Um, that's going to help us identify our oxidation versus reduction. And then the other trick that we have is red cat. Red cat reminds us that the reduction reaction is taking place at the cathode which is what ultimately we have to figure out what's going on at the cathode, what's going on at the anode. So let's take this reaction right here and divide it up into its half reactions. Remember to do that, we're going to take um, each one of those reactants. So I've got Fe solid, that's one of my reactants. And then my, my other reactant is the FeNO3. Um, and so it's FeNO3-3. But for this problem, it's going to be easier if for all of our ionic things if we treat them like two separate components. So instead of writing this as FeNO3-3, I want to write this as Fe3+, plus aqueous, and um, NO3- minus aqueous. And notice I'm not balancing anything. I'm not going to balance anything. Uh, we'll balance it on the at the very end before we put it into Alex. So then the next thing that I want to do is figure out what my products are. And this one is actually pretty tricky uh, because we're dealing with iron and iron. Like normally we have two different substances. It makes it a little bit easier to identify on our product side what goes where. Um, for this, we've got, let's kind of focus over here first. We have Fe solid as one of our products. And that's not going to make sense if we match it up right here with this half reaction because this would be Fe solid turning into Fe solid. Nothing going on at all. So let's put the Fe solid down here for this half reaction. And then that means um, the other one, FeNO3-2, that's going to go up here, FeNO3-2. But again, I want to just um, focus on the ion. So if we have an ionic compound, we're going to think about it in terms of its cation, Fe2+, plus, aqueous, and NO3 minus aqueous. Now in these problems, you're probably going to find that whatever counter ion you have, like it's going to be present in both of those half reactions. In this case, we have NO3 minus that's present in both of the half reactions. Another one that Alex likes to use is chloride ion present in both of the half reactions. And when we see that, we know that that means it's a spectator. Um, so I'm going to kind of get rid of it. Like temporarily, I'm just going to, I'm not gonna completely erase it because it is important. It's gonna be important later. I think what I'm just gonna do is like move it out of the way. We're just gonna not think about it for a minute. We're just gonna put it down here. This is gonna allow us to focus, just focus solely on the, the actual substances that are getting oxidized or reduced. So let's go ahead and balance this half reaction right here. The irons are already balanced. That means we just need to add two electrons over here to the right-hand side and it's balanced. And then let's do the same thing for this one. We'll need to add three electrons on the left-hand side and it's balanced. These are the actual um, redox reactions that are occurring in this galvanic cell. So we can enter them into these boxes right here. We just need to know which is the oxidation, which one is the reduction. And here's our tricks. Oxidation involves the loss of electrons. This is a process that involves the loss of electrons. Sometimes this is kind of a confusing concept for students because they look at this and they say, oh, re electrons are being made. You know, the world is gaining electrons from this, from this reaction. The oil rig trick is um, thinking in terms of the reactants. So the oxidation involves the reactant losing electrons. Reduction involves the reactant gaining electrons. So this is an oxidation process. And our other half reaction, reduction involves the reactants gaining electrons. This is our reduction reaction. And red cat means that this reaction, the reduction reaction is taking place at the cathode. Oxidation is taking place at the anode. We're ready to enter these into the first part of the Alex problem. What reaction is happening at the cathode? It's this one right here. And this is exactly how you want to be entering it. Alex doesn't wanna see the nitrate, the NO3 minus in this part. 
It just wants you to get like focus on the actual things that are undergoing oxidation or reduction. You do need to include states. So I've got those on there as well. And then our anode is Fe solid turning into Fe2 plus. And for this problem, Alex doesn't need these two equations to be balanced with respect to each other. So it's going to be perfectly fine that one of them has three electrons and one of them has two. They just need to be balanced for themselves. So this reaction needs to be balanced by itself, but it doesn't need to be balanced with the other one. Okay, so we've got that figured out. Now we're being asked to determine what are the different components of this galvanic cell. It's gonna be helpful for us to kind of think about what goes where on the galvanic cell, just in terms of the electrons. In the, this first reaction right here, the oxidation reaction, this is where electrons are being lost. And from the flow of the electrons in this diagram, electrons are being lost from the left-hand side and they are being gained by the right-hand side. So that means that this is our oxidation and this is our reduction. And this is convention for a galvanic cell that it's always written going in this direction. So that means that this half reaction is the one that's occurring on the left-hand side. Our electrode is always gonna be made up of the solid in that half reaction. So this half reaction's solid is iron, and that means that that's what that particular electrode is made up of, and Alex does want you to include the state. For the blue side, the right side, this is the reaction that's taking place. And again, the electrode is always made up of the solid substance. Whether it's a reactant or product, that doesn't matter. Um, it's, it's always going to be the solid. So E2 is also made of iron, and that's pretty unusual. Normally, they're different substances, but that's, the, that's what's going on here. Now, in terms of what's in each one of these solutions, that's the last thing that Alex wants us to ask. If we look at the oxidation reaction, that's our left-hand side, the pale yellow side, the ions, in this case, Fe2+, that's what we have in our solution, Fe2+. It doesn't matter if it's reactant or product, we're looking for the ions. So for the reduction reaction, the one that's on the, the blue side, the right-hand side, we're looking for our ions, Fe3+, that's in there as well. Now there's one more thing that's involved in this, and that is the nitrate down here that I got rid of for a second. That nitrate ion, or whatever the ion might be, like I said, sometimes Alex likes to use chlorides here, um, this ion is also present in both of these solutions. How can I squeeze that in right there? So it's going to be in both of them because it is on both sides of, of this particular equation. So what's in S1 solution number one? We have Fe2+, plus, it's aqueous, and we have NO3-, minus, it's also aqueous. And then in solution two, we have Fe3+, plus, aqueous, and we also have NO3-, minus, aqueous.